I see. And when you were kind of talking about, and this is a client that I currently have right now, where you're like, okay, look at the installs, look at what they're doing, put them into cohorts, and then figure out like, you know, if you want them to subscribe, how long it takes to subscribe, and then work backwards, right? Like if it takes them, you know, seven days, for instance, let's think about ways that we can drip campaigns. Or like, well, how would you use that data to say, okay, Lior, I know my customers, you know, they retain, they subscribe within the first seven days or they don't. How would I use that data then to like, what kind of things should I be doing with that data? So in, in the first point of it is actually to understand when your revenue event is happening. So when is your conversion happening? The second phase will be basically to do a retargeting campaigns. So as I see it, I'm quite, I'm, I'm, I'm building on the fact that I'm saying that most users of app are going to delete the app most likely in the first 30 days if they haven't returned at least twice in the first seven days. This is, this is data that we, we look quite often on subscription-based apps, for example. And uh, this is quite interesting because this means that if in the, seven, in the first seven days you didn't have at least twice a visit from the user on top of the install event already, you should check why and how can you trigger it again, and you can start already there. And if he, after 30 days, you know that most of your users uninstall their app, you need to do, again, an, a UEC campaigns actually, to, to attract them back, to install the app again. Uh, but you can say that in the first 30 days, you don't attract this user to reinstall the app. You will give them the time, and then after 30 days, or after 60 days, or after 90 days, you're actually starting to target them again with installs. Until then, you're trying to retarget them to open the app. And, and, and you're building some strategy, basically, that's saying how you should spread your money. Because we have a limited budget. We all have limited budget. It's not that like we have millions sitting in our bank account just waiting for us to spend them. And, and the idea of it is to take this data and actually understand how the users react. And based on their reaction to decide when and how much money do I spend. Because there is a certain amount that you can spend on the user, right? Because, you know, usually a revenue for a user is going to be $15. And if I'm going to spend now uh, $100 on him, does it make sense? Yeah. Do you help it's your clients with that, with the retargeting campaigns, or do you recommend somebody else? We don't do campaigns at all. We're helping in automation of campaigns, so we're doing the automations processes. Uh, but we are not coming from the marketing perspective. We're coming from the data perspective. We're sitting just in the middle between the engineers, let's say, and the marketing on the other side. And we are the, one, we are the arm that's operating both of them to basically drive better results. Because on the one side, you need the engineers to build your databases, you need the engineers to build your automation, and on the other side, you need the marketeers to keep doing campaigns so the machines can learn and can readjust and you can basically improve in your business. Yeah, the, I love that thing, what you talked about retargeting, because I remember I did an article about this, but Tiago from Peak, you know, peak brain training, they do a phenomenal job of retargeting. That's what you talked about. Like, hey, we know where those revenue points are, kind of like what you talked about. And they use retargeting campaigns because they know if they can bring people back in within that first seven days, they're more likely to subscribe. And so they really rely heavily on retargeting campaigns and showing the most popular games. And so if you have some more popular content, making sure you utilize that in your ads to bring them back into your app. Anything you want to add on that, Lior? No, exactly. You need, you need to understand this data. You need to have this data to actually make these decisions. Otherwise, you're just going to do it blindly. And it's a, it's a shame. It's so true. The other thing I want to talk about is when you're working with the bigger clients who are spending, let's say, tens of thousands of dollars, maybe $1,000 a day, and you're talking about ROAS now, you're talking about looking, getting data from Google UAC and Facebook, what are you then now looking at? Because there's so much data points now. So what we, as the bigger the client is, the more narrowing we're doing their data. So there is a very important uh, view in what we do. And what we say is that you cannot have more than three daily KPIs to uh, optimize your campaigns. There are only three you can use. This is the maximum you can do. And what we're basically doing is that we're understanding that we cannot tell them, okay, you just use now ROI. We're just uh, using some certain metric on their uh, uh, funnel of the session. So we're doing like a campaign ranking, which this is basically coming from a data scientist. He's building a model that says, based on these events, these are the chances that this campaign is a su successful campaign comparing to other campaigns that we had. And we're using all this data, but we, we minimize it. So we're taking, we're compressing tons of points on the way into one number saying this is 8.7. If you remember, we talked about it in the last uh, interview we had, 
we talked about the indexing. And this is exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to give people the indication based on a lot of events on the session, what is actually the, the worth of the session itself or the, the users that just brought. Yeah, and if you guys want to listen to that, and I'll link up to that episode as well, but 696. So if you want to just check out the previous episode, you can definitely do that. The, what I want to move on is when you say let's become data-driven, right? Like what does that really mean? Because I think you mentioned it too. It's we look at all this data. It's not so much about collecting it. It's like, what the hell do we do with all this data? Exactly. So when we're talking about data-driven, it means that we're understanding the data, we're understanding the funnel of the data, and we're understanding what we should use. So this is another mistake that I'm seeing quite often, is that people don't know which measures to use. So we have clicks that come in from Facebook and Google, for example, but we also have click information that coming, coming from Adjust a and from AppsFire. And now some of the people just mixing them all together. They're taking the impressions from Facebook and Google and the clicks from Adjust, and, and they, they're trying to do a CTR from that and a ranking and a score. And it, this is not how it should be. It should be much more simplified. And it should be one number that's taking you all the way. Uh, and, and then if we're taking impression, we should use the clicks that are coming actually from the provider, from the ad partner. While if you want to see on clicks that are coming from just, there is always a difference. There is always like, some discrepancy in the numbers, and we cannot use it. So to become a really data-driven, it means that you understand the difference between the data sources and why is it happening and how you can fix it or, how, or which data you should use. And then at the end of it, it's, it's need to be actionable. What is the action I'm driving out of this data I'm collecting? You can collect a lot, but do you actually driving any actions? If you don't drive actions, just keep it in your graveyard, and one day you can call it and start using it. But bury it for now and don't, don't look at it. It's just going to mix you up. And when you say, like, focus on the three daily KPIs, is that just client dependent? Uh, no, not at all. It's everybody. Everybody should focus up to three KPIs. There should not be more than three KPIs because we cannot make decisions. Well, I mean, like, are the KPIs dependent on the client? Meaning, across the board, do you say, hey, you should always look at installs, you should always look at revenue points? Are there, like, specific ones uh -huh. that you the KPIs that you should always look at, or is it really client dependent? So it, it, it's client dependent. Most of them coming at the end of the day to, yes, I want to have installs. But then, to be honest, I don't think that installs is a number that's going to help you on a daily basis. This is something you need to have maybe on a weekly basis. Because there is no action that's going to be driven if you're going to see on a daily basis that your install numbers are going down or up. Because if we're looking at, at the days of the week, right, so usually Fridays, are quite low, then Saturday, Sunday, there is a huge jump. So usually it's Sundays, there is a huge peak of installs because people are sitting at home, they are bored, they're searching the app and they're downloading something. And, and we cannot say that install is a number that we need to look at on a daily basis. If you, look, if you ask me what you should look on a daily basis, this should be actually the campaign uh, ranking score. It should be uh, what is the revenues that you were driving. It should be how much money you spend. This is, for me, the three KPIs, more or less, that I will put there. And I know that ROI is changing quite often, but at least you're understanding, okay, how my breaking per day of spending goes, how is the revenue goes, and if there is a correlation there, you will immediately see. And this is something that you can actually act, right? Because if you're reducing your spendings and you see that the revenues go down, then there is something that you're doing wrong, so you need to figure it out. Or if there is a huge increase in your cost, but the revenues are not going up or they're actually declining, this is again a red mark, right? This is actions that you can do on a daily basis. While looking at installs, it's something that is not going to help you on a daily basis. It's maybe a weekly basis to know, okay, I'm doing a great job. I was driving 50,000 installs this week. Okay. It could drive you crazy too, looking at those daily installs. <laughs> it drives me crazy. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, we got one client. We're trying to really get them above a thousand. It's just like you know, I'm constantly looking at it every day. And it's like, how do we go up there? How do we go up there? Yeah, you're right. It does drive me a little bit crazy. So if you say, okay, look, like I think I know my audience a little bit, where they just might not be spending as much. So like, okay, I have this cost per install data, but like it's not that important to me because I might be spending a hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars there, just to def test different stuff. So if I don't have that cost per install, is there another metric that you're like, okay, we'll replace that with? Installs, maybe? 
You can replace this with installs, of course, but for me, as I see it, we, we should not be driven by emotion. And once you're looking at installs, this is emotional thing. This is not any more logical thing. When you're looking at revenue, when you're looking, I don't know, click uh, amount of ads viewed, this is something that they can do also if they have only organic and they're not spending any money. This is less emotional because there is a logic behind it that says I need to have an average 15 or 25 ads viewed every day to make actually, actually profit. And there is a logic behind it. And this is something that needs to be very important on a daily basis. We put emotion on the side and we're just going based on logic. This is a very important part of it. I like how you said emotion about it too. So true. As you can tell, I was very emotional <laughs> about the whole install numbers. <laughs> All right, Lior, like, tell me about this new product that's going to really help people analyze their data better. So what we basically developed, uh, we were talking with uh, a lot of clients in the past uh, months. And what we found out, it's actually that the problem is in understanding how to use the data correctly. And what we've done is we build a tool that going and collecting the data for you from the different partners. And then it gives you in a way of a funnel, basically, that we created. We call it the data discovery workshop. It's basically, it's building it in three sections. And in each section, it's reducing a little bit more the amount of information you can get at the end of it. Well, we go in on the first section, we allow them to see all the information that they have. They can ask whatever questions they want. So how many insults do I have? Uh, what are my DAOs? What are my WOWs? And so on and so on. Then on the second section, we actually tell them, okay, out of these questions, what are the measures that you think you need? What are the must-have? What is the nice-to-have? And we limit them out of that. So if they have 50 or 60 measures before, suddenly they have a place a placeholder now for 25 only. So they need to be very, very thoughtful about what they're using. And this is basically how the data, with the tables themselves, are going to be created. And then the third step is actually the visualization. So how we're taking your measures, we're creating KPIs, but here also we limit you. So we're having three tables that we're going to create for you, three uh, dashboards, sorry, that we're going to create for you. One is will be a daily base, which this is the action-driven table. There you basically, you're coming, you go by logic, this is the campaign to kill, this is the campaign to improve, this crate is working great. Then on a weekly basis, you can do a little bit more research to support you, to make you feel good. You know, you tap your, your shoulder and say, I did a great job this day. And then the monthly one is more of a overview. So it's more for the teams to go into a, a deep dive and really understand what happened, what went wrong, and what should be fixed for the month to come. Because when we're looking at budget, we have a fixed budget most of the time for the entire year, and then it breaks into months and weeks. But... To change stuff too often, not going to be healthy for your campaigns, not going to be healthy for the clients as well. So we're trying to do it actually once a month and then based on it, you can make decisions. I should have invested more money into Facebook because actually Snapchat was a, was a money a sucker this month and I spent a lot of money there. And this is basically the idea of what we build there. So we're helping these customers to arrive to, to three different dashboards that they can easily understand what they need to do next. I like that. And I like that how you limit it. So I'm going to imagine, Lior, that when you work with clients more on a hand-holding basis or a non-product basis, that you're doing pretty much the same things. Like, hey, you know, let's link up all your analytics and all your data so that we can pull it all and then tell me the key metrics that you want to focus on and we're going to help you sort of analyze all that stuff. Exactly. So we're going to clients and we have them basically how, how they need to build their data to actually make a, a more automated decisions. Most of our time wasting around 60% or 70% of the day is on campaign uh, creation and campaign uh, optimization. And we should not waste this time. It's a waste of time that can be automated quite easily if we're going to go in the right tools. And this is exactly where we're coming into the picture. We're helping them to understand what are the right tools for them. You know, I don't know if you feel this way, but when I talk to clients sometimes, like there's always the same ASO tips or like same different like growth hacks that I'm going over that I'm shocked that not everybody knows about. When you're talking to newer, newer clients or maybe potential clients, are there things that you're like, man, this is something that I constantly repeat. And so I'm just going to say it on Steve's video and I can just <laughs> point to this video and be like, hey, go watch this video, video before our call. Don't use Excel. That will be the number one issue that I'm facing with most of my clients. When I arrive in, even if they have a state-of-the-art reporting system, which is working perfectly fine, like Tableau or Locker or whatever, Power BI is sitting on it, they're still downloading the data and working with it in Excel because they don't trust the numbers. And this is also things that 
people should understand they need to trust the numbers. And you should not start working with Excel because Excel just causing more issues. It's a time waster on the one side. On the other one, if you've done the VLOOKUP wrongly, everything is screwed. Go make decisions based on it afterwards. Yeah. What do you use then? I mean, well, I've got this dump, data dump. Like, what am, what am I supposed to put it? This is exactly why we build this product. We're saying you have a data dump, but we actually construct it for you in the right way so you don't need to go to the data dump. You don't need to deal with any shitty data or any, any issues with your data. You're just getting a product, and this is how it should be. This is most of the clients, if they don't have a data engineer on board, this is, they should find a tool that's going to automate it for them so they can make decisions in an easy way. And this is, this is the most important part. And the ones who have a data engineer, they should sit with the data engineer, pull him in his ear, and make him work and actually make something out of it. You know, It's like, we have the data. Let's actually make something I can use. And this is, this is a very important message, I think. 